Good morning, New Beginning Church, and good morning to our online visitors and friends. We are just so excited that you have joined in with us, and we thank and praise God for allowing us to come again one more time just to lift up the name of Jesus. We're going to ask that you will stand to your feet as we do our opening song that's called Emmanuel.
Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me in all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Father God, I want to ask you, I want to thank you for bringing us here today, dear Lord. I want to ask that you bless us and you bless those who are on the way, Lord. You bless those who are watching, Lord. And you bless those who have the intention to come but couldn't make it, dear Lord. I want to ask that you keep us in this week that comes and that you bless us as we prepare to keep going, Lord. Thank you for bringing us through the week that we learned and everything that happened and you kept us as everything happened. Lord, I want to ask that throughout the pandemic that you keep us safe and that you keep us in your arms because you know that you are the one who always is out there, Lord. Thank you for bringing the students in the semester and thank you for bringing the teachers as well, dear Lord. Thank you for everything that you've done for us and that you will keep doing because you know that you are the only great God. And your son, Jesus, holy and blessed name. Amen. 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 Amen.
celebrate him today or you just came to be coming? Did, did you show up and celebrate him? Or did you come just to be here? 
just to see who wearing what on this Christmas celebration. Let me call your attention to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. Very, very familiar passages that we're looking at today. Luke chapter 2. Bring me down just a little bit on number 2. Just a little bit on number 2. Touch the red button, take it to the left just a little bit, and bring down the slide bar number 2 just a little bit. Amen. Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. Verse number 17. Luke chapter 2. Verse number 17. You found that you would discover these words. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known, saying, which was told concerning this child. I want to talk about this child. This child. Throughout our nation, and I dare say throughout this world in which we live, people are excited about newborn babies. And yes, they ought to be, they ought to be excited, they ought to, to celebrate the birth of newborn babies, and they ought to be excited about their children because regardless of how the child got here, the Bible teaches that children are blessings from the Lord. Yes. Do you remember when your child was born? Mm -hmm. How excited you were and how thrilled you were? Do you remember that, that you stated way before the child had activities that there is nobody like this child? Mm -hmm. You remember, don't you? You remember when, when your child was born and when you were holding him or holding her. You remember how great joy filled your heart. It doesn't matter if the daddy was on the scene or not. You knew that this child was going to be something worthwhile. All right. And let me just tell those who are who are having to make a decision today that no, we never know what children will become. But regardless of what they become, they are always precious in the sight of God. Amen. Doesn't matter how they got here. Doesn't matter how, how things happened. Doesn't matter the arrangement or whether there was an arrangement or not. Children are special in the eyes of God. Yes. There's nothing like a newborn baby. There's nothing like they don't talk back. <laughs> they lose their manners at will and you think it's cute. It's because there's always something special about your child. Amen. I remember when my mind was born. I mean, I held her in her hand, my hand, and, and I knew that she was going to be special. And as she grew, there was nothing like this child and nobody child like this child. And as she grew, we, we mowed the yard together. I mean, I had her on my shoulder, and I, I handled the more with one hand, and and held her hand and her legs with the other hand. We were just excited. We have pictures of how I was laying up under the, the weight bench trying to tighten something and she was able to hand me a, a screwdriver or a wrench. I mean, it was an exciting moment. I, I remember how, how when I would come home after 12 hours shift at 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning after 12 hours, I, she would run. And I mean, I was her hero then. I was special then, and I was only special because I made her feel special. I was different. I, 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 when, when she was born, it took my responsibility to a new level. I mean, it was a, a child like none other. Now, if you listen to grandparents today, Regardless of who they are, they'll tell you, boy, this child here, this grandchild of mine is just so special. They carry pictures around in their phone, carry pictures around in their purses and their wallets. They, they make sure they have the fun times with that child, and, and they're just excited of how they, their children are producing. I mean, Braylon's grandmother is just so excited about him. I mean, she thinks that little red boy is in the world for God. 
I mean, Sophia, Sophia can do this and that, and her daddy just loves the fact that Sophia can really do these things. I mean, Ash, Ashley gets bragged on every day. Her daddy and mama have seen nothing like her. I mean, she is just amazing. She thinks faster. She, she moves faster. She acts faster. Ah, she, ah, she is just, he's just a dream come true. I mean, he can play a sax even at a young age. I mean, that boy got it going on. If you don't believe me, ask his daddy and his mom. They'll tell you. So we must all conclude that every child that is born is very special. We must conclude that every child that is born is going to do great things in life. And we also must conclude, regardless of how much trouble they get in, we are on our best behavior and spend our last dime to help get them out of trouble. It's because how precious are the children that we handle. How precious are the children that God has blessed us with. And God keeps right on blessing us. And yes, we ought to be proud of them. We, we ought to be proud of every age, every good conduct grade. We ought to be proud of how they repeat what we say. And they just obey everything we ask them to do. I won't forget. I won't forget we were out. I was inside and my daughter was outside at the age of three. And she was telling this little girl, that's an insect. She said, no, that's a bug. She said, no, it's an insect. And she said, no, that's a bug. She said, that's an insect because it has three parts. It has three sets of legs. It's an insect. Well, how you know so much? You just three. I'm five because my daddy said so. I mean, it gives you joy. It gives you pride. It gives you life to live just a little while longer. Such it is in the text. When we look at Luke chapter 2, we find the birth of Jesus the Christ. Situations were bad, just like they are now. You think people are doing crazy stuff now? They were doing crazy stuff back then. We see people that will, will shoot because somebody's playing loud music and won't stop shooting until the person is no longer breathing and is dead. When you see people who will, who will applaud a man that will kneel on another man's neck for nine minutes or something and, and, and his lifeless body is laying under his knee and, 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 and when the, the paramedic gets there, he keeps right on kneeling. One who has been given and have taken an oath to serve and protect. These things are not new. These things were happening back then. Homicide and who and suicide, hoodoo and voodoo was on the rise then also. But because of this situation, God needed a remedy. And that remedy is Jesus. Well, the first thing I want to talk to you about today, and I'm going to give you my three points, of, and I'm through. I mean, I'm, I'm done. You can go eat your turkey today. The first thing I want to let you know is God has a remedy. And that remedy is because we have sinned. The remedy for sin is Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. But in order for him to die, he had to be born. You know the story, but I tell it anyway. The fact of the matter is his, his daddy Joseph had to go in and give account of himself by way of a census. I said his daddy. I didn't say his stepdaddy. Because we don't have step anything. Because children deserve to have the, the right to do the things and be approved by those who got them here. So his daddy had to go and take the census. Even though he didn't provide the seed, he was known as his daddy. All right. First of all, you find Mary engaged to a man and come up pregnant. Hmm. Now, every brother in this room would be like, I ain't having that. Hmm. That ain't going on. So she comes up expecting a baby and has the nerve, the audacity, the gall, Sister Woods, to say, it's by the Holy Ghost. 
Something, something that, that has never been done before. Something that has never been done since. She shows up expecting. She shows up with a baby. With a baby growing inside of her with no intimacy. The Bible says she didn't know a man. No contact. And Joseph knew that he hadn't been there. So he decided, being an honorable man that he is, he decided, I'm going to put her away quietly. And while he slept with this matter on his mind of putting her away quietly, the Holy Spirit spoke to him in his dream. He said, this thing is the doing of God. This thing is the doing of the Holy Spirit. So he obeyed, just like men would do today. He obeyed the Holy Spirit, brother Dixon. He obeyed the Holy Spirit. He, he kept Mary a woman that did not carry his baby, but was carrying a baby by somebody else. Right. The songwriter would have told him like this, and, and the guys on the corner would have been singing the song, Ain't No Sense in Going Home. <laughs> Jolie got your gal and gone. But because it was by the Holy Spirit, because she was impregnated by the Holy Spirit, Joseph kept her. So it came where a star shined brightly over Bethlehem. And really the star was just to get the men attention because the fact of the matter, the star was being born. There's no star like Jesus. We rush to celebrities. We want celebrities' autographs. And we want to make sure that we get messages from celebrities. Get to touch their hands. Get to get their signature. Get to talk to them in person. Let me tell you, if you want to talk to the greatest star that was ever born, his name is Jesus. That's right. That's right. The star stopped right over there. And, and then there were shepherds. As we pick up this pericope, they follow the star. They were out with their sheep and they were grazing their sheep and, and the angel shows up and tells them that there's a savior that is being born. In the city of David, his name is Jesus. They sung about him, Emmanuel, meaning God with us. The heavenly host showed up and once the heavenly host showed up, they were praising God and after the heavenly host showed up, all the multitude of heaven stopped what they were doing just to honor Jesus. The angels were there. And in verse 13 it says, suddenly there was with the angels a multitude of the heavenly host. This heavenly host is the army of God. And they were doing some things because the remedy for sin had showed up on the scene. It says in verse 14, Luke chapter 2, it says that glory to, they were hollering glory to God in the highest, in the highest heaven, in the highest above the stratosphere, in the highest heaven, glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, goodwill toward all men. The remedy brings peace on earth. Wars were going on. Rumors of wars were taking place. This is nothing new. Wars and trouble and, and people abandoning the people and, and mistreating people and oppressing people. It was going on then. And this heavenly host shows up and says, peace on earth. Goodwill toward all men. Because the remedy, Jesus the Christ, was on the scene. Look at verses 15 through 20. You find out that the angel spoke to them and told them, don't be afraid. He said, so it was when the angels had gone away, away from them into heaven. The angels went back to heaven. When the angels leave heaven, when the angels leave heaven, you know it's a big event. The angels left heaven and they, they cried out, glory to God, peace on earth, goodwill toward all men. And then the angels left and went back to heaven. Did the angels show up at your child's birth? Did the angels show up at your grandchild's birth? It's only Jesus that the multitude from heaven shows up and begin to rejoice. They leave earth, go back to heaven. And then the shepherds cried out, let's go and see this thing that has happened. 
Luke describes it as a thing because there's, there's no words that you can put into it. Jesus, the remedy for sin, has shown up on planet Earth. God himself had rolled himself into flesh, got off in a place called Bethlehem of Judea. They didn't have good clothes, baby, no baby clothes, no baby showers. They wrapped him in strips of cloth. Some theologians believe that this strip of cloth was the same kind of strips of cloth they wrapped dead bodies in. There was no room at the end, no hotel. No holiday inn. No hotel sofa table. There was no inn and there was no room at the end. No place for Jesus to be born. That's just like the word of the day. We have no place for him. Some people that maybe listen to me, they have no place in their heart for him. There was no room for him in the end. This is a great thing that had come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste. Let me tell you, whenever, whenever Jesus is on the scene, you better come with haste. My next point to you is there are some reactions that took place. The remedy, Jesus, the remedy for sin, Jesus has shown up. But there was some reaction. And let me tell you, everything that comes must have a reaction. But there were reactions like never before when Jesus showed up. I said there were reactions like never before when Jesus showed up. The Bible says, the Bible, the Bible says, this with love, the Bible says they made haste to see this baby. They made haste to see this child. They got in a hurry. They're back home, the, the senior saints said, boy, go ahead and make haste. They said, get in a hurry. They said, they said, underlay, underlay. They said, come now. Get, get in a hurry. Get, start running now. They made haste. They got in a hurry. Somebody today needs to make haste to get to know Jesus. Somebody today needs to sacrifice all the stuff that they've been doing so they can get to know Jesus. Somebody is suffering right now because they don't know him. I suggest to you, you get to know him. And you need to make haste to get to know him. Amen. So there was a reaction. They made haste and they found Mary. They found Joseph and they found the baby. The baby was lying in a manger. It was good that Mary was there. It was good that Joseph was there. But if Joseph and Mary had not been there, Sister Hughes, God still would have been on the scene. You see, Mary is just conduit. Mm -hmm. Mary is just, just the conduit that the wire runs through. Mm -hmm. In other words, these lights are on in this room. Mm -hmm. And when you walk in this room, you don't look for the conduit. Mm -hmm. You don't even care about the conduit. The only thing you care about is when they flip the switch, the lights come on. Right. Because if they flip the switch and the light doesn't come on, brother, when they're going to say, Pastor David didn't pay the light bill. It's because it's just the conduit that carries the wire, that carries the neutrons, the protons, and the electrons to the light. All right. And you just want light. You just want light. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, if you ever want to see a mad woman, brothers, mm -hmm. let her get home. Mm -hmm. Sister Irvin, just show up at home. Mm -hmm. And the lights are not on. She, she, she doesn't care. She doesn't care if somebody hit a post. She, she doesn't care if, 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 if somebody down the street turned them off. She just won't light in there after air conditioning is off too. You have trouble on your hand. And matter of fact, brother, why are you just sitting here looking at me? You should have called them a long time ago and told them to get on this. This idea is in the text. In the text, Jesus is on the scene. Mary was just a conduit. Mary was just a vessel. Mary was just an instrument that God used to get the Savior of the world to planet Earth. God, used, God is using you now to get the Word of God out to mankind all over the world. You're just kind of, don't get beside yourself. Don't, don't get to the point where you think you can preach so well until people ought to bow down to you. Don't get to the point where you think you can sing so well and that church is not going to make it without me. Don't get beside yourself. 
where you think that you're so in tune with first impression that you know how to usher people in until you get beside yourself. Let me tell you, God chooses to use who he chooses to use anytime he chooses to use them. You just can't do it. You, you just, you're just a vessel. You, you're just an instrument. And God can use whoever, whomever he chooses to use. You're just, you're just a vessel. God, God, thank God for being a vessel. Thank God for being a vessel. We got here in our cars today. It doesn't matter if it's the latest model or it's a hoopty. It's a vessel that got you here. God chose Mary as a vessel who got Jesus on the scene. So they, they made haste. There were reactions. When, whenever Jesus is on the scene, you ought to make haste. Mary and Joseph was there, but the baby was lying in the manger. Now, when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. Talking about this child, this child. When a person comes in touch with Jesus, he or she can never be the same. He, he or she can never, Sister Davis, once they get to know Jesus. They can never, ever be the same. The shiftlessness that they used to have, they get in a hurry now. The sacrifices that they never dreamed of making, now they're willing to sacrifice. They get in a hurry, they make sacrifices, they, and then when they used to talk about that's just the way I am, they don't talk about that anymore. Because when they get to know Jesus, their lives are different. Their lives are changed. Is your life changed? Are, are you different? Are you the same way you were six months ago? Are you different? Has, has God touched you? Has, has God made a difference in your life? Has God done something different with you that he's never done with you before? And you can be holy, and you can be sanctimonious, and you can be all that you think you need to be, but God has something else for you to do. How many people in this room is breathing? How many people are breathing? How many, how many people in this room know that their heart is pumping blood to every extremity of your body? How, how many people know that, that when they want to stand up, they can stand up? How many people can wave their hand? It's not because you're so holy, baby. It's not because you're so convicted by God, brother. It's not because you're so deserving. It's simply because God, through his amazing grace, through his tender, loving mercy, has given us one more chance to be here. He's given us one more chance. He's given us one more chance. Not a chance that we deserve. When you look at this, this remedy, when, when you look at the reactions, there ought to be some reactions that you can identify with. The, 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 the shepherds went and they saw this child. They saw this child. They, they, I'm sure they saw other children somewhere and in their pathway, but that those children really weren't important until they saw this child. And it says he saw, they saw this child, they saw this child, Sister Darren, and they saw this child, and guess what? They didn't see Santa Claus. <laughs> they saw this child, and they didn't see Rudolph. <laughs> they saw this child, and they didn't see a big man coming down a chimney. <laughs> they saw this child, and they didn't leave any cookies on the table. They saw this child, and they did not see the tooth fairy. They saw this child. This, this word, this word, this is a is a direct object. It is it is one that identifies not those, but this one. It it, 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 it identifies nothing else but this one. It was this child that they came to see, and it was this child that they saw. I know your children, your grandchildren. I mean, they're so precious. They're so, I mean, you just like having fun with them. But, but if you're going to get to heaven, if you're going to be different on planet Earth, you need to see this child. Yes. So it's not long if you don't see this child, the specialness of Ash is just temporary. You got to see this child. 
Let's come back to the reaction. The reaction. They went to see this child. They saw this child. And the things which were told to the shepherds, the things that they heard, the things that they saw, they marveled at those things. It blew their mind. It blew their mind. It's, I mean, children can say some things today that can blow your mind. <laughs> but not the case here. And when they saw Jesus, when they heard the stories of, of how Jesus was born, they marveled at them. They, because they got to look the wonderful counselor in his face. They marveled. They were blown away. They were excited. Let me tell you, there ought to be some reaction. You ought to be blown away. If you're not blown away with Jesus, what are you blown away with? If Jesus doesn't appeal to you, if Jesus doesn't excite you, why are you so why are you so stuck up? Why do you think you are so special? Why do you think that, that you are the only one who can do what you do? We, we need to see this child. If men, women, boys, and girls throughout our city, throughout our countryside, throughout our nation, if they would see just this child, our lives would be made the better. I'm going to tell you my prayer. Let me tell you my prayer. When, when, when it, was, it was noise that, that the, the former president, Donald J. Trump, had come across COVID-19. This was my prayer. Lord, don't let him die. But make him look at the very darkness and the deepness of hell where he will understand and see this child. I know y'all so holy, y'all think that was just, just so totally out of line. But let me tell you, it, it's when men get to see Jesus that lives are made to death. Yeah, that's right. You ought to be praying for the boy that steals from you. You ought to be praying for the burglar that, that's stooping around your house. You ought to lift them before Jesus. Because when men, women, boys, and girls come to Jesus, burglaries leave. Right. Rapists get saved. Mm -hmm. It's because... Of Jesus, there's something special yes. about this child. There ought to be some reaction. Now, let's see what the reactions were. Verse number 18 says that they marveled. When they heard it, they marveled at the things which were told them by the shepherd. Now, check this out. The shepherds were amazed. And then the people that they talked to were amazed. They got the story right. Here's a child that was born of a virgin. No man was on the scene. She was born of a virgin and she delivered a real child. She delivered a real child. This woman delivered a child. A child was born. We got to start telling our children the truth. They're already hearing other stuff anyway. They're, they're already, they already know how children, they ask you, how did I get here? They already know. A child, a special child, a different child. They marveled at him. The reactions were they marveled, and then the people they told marveled. See, when you get the message right, when you get the message right, there are certain reactions that comes with it. Verse 19, it says, but Mary, there's a different reaction. But Mary kept these things and pondered them. In a heart. You see, people can react different ways to different things. But Mary pondered things in her in her heart. When it comes to the word of God, you need to ponder it in your heart. You need to allow the word of God to seek in your heart. You need to meditate on, on it in your heart. You need to pray the word. Meaning that when you talk to God, you ought to tell God what he said in his word. And then you ought to seek to see how it applies to you in your situation. Now, God, you know. I mean, you pray this prayer when, 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 when money gets fun. I, I pray this prayer. Now, now, God, you know. You promised God that if I, I give my tithes and my offer, that I would have no want, God. You promised God. That if I wouldn't steal from you, if I wouldn't rob you, you would open up windows from heaven and pull me out just one blessing that I won't have room enough. You ever prayed that prayer? You ain't never been broke. 
I, I've been so broke. I've been so clean and broke. I went to interviews, poor and broke. I went to interviews. I couldn't pay to pay to make a phone call. I went to interviews with my tie and, 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 and my shirt and my suit on and didn't have enough money in my pocket to even buy lunch. But there's one thing about it. I promise God that God, when I pray, I'm going to remind you of what you said in your word. And God, you said that if I give, you would give unto me and you would give unto me through other people. See, God is not dropping blessings down from heaven. But the Bible says that he will, he will touch the hearts of other people and they will give good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and overflowing, running over. Yes, and I don't even have to be for folks. Yeah. Folks, folks just show up. I mean, people just, and, and people said, people said, we don't even know, what, know how we're doing it. We don't even know why we're doing it. We don't even know what prompted us to do it. It's because we are given. So the reaction must be one where you are amazed. But the fact of the matter is, as you pray the word, you also ought to pray over the word. And as you read and you study, as you listen to the word, and I know all of us in this room and all of us that are listening, been listening to the word. We're almost at the end of the year. I know you're almost through listening to the Bible. I know you I know every 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 week you're walking down through the daily reading. You're putting it in your heart because when you put it in your heart, sin can't exist there. All right. it, 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 the Bible says she pondered it in her heart. And so we ought to pray the word. God, God, you said this. And we ought to pray over the word as we read the word, we listen to the word. We, ask, we ought to ask God to bless us to hear your word. Bless your word to be made clear to us. God, give us understanding of your word. And God would do it. The Bible says she pondered it. Look at all these reactions. She pondered it in her heart. Verse number 20 says, The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. My final point is the reason. The reason that the remedy for sin is Jesus. The reactions are that we ought to run and tell people about the goodness of God. Bishop Allen Rice challenged us, and I accepted his challenge, to have 10 days to Christmas where you would post or you would write or you would put a notepad where you would speak something of how Jesus has impacted your life. What does Jesus mean to you? In your daily conversation, you ought to tell somebody who Jesus is. What does Jesus mean to you? And how he has impacted your life. So by taking that challenge for 10 days, we are, we, are, we are telling people who Jesus is. We are telling people what Jesus means to us. And we are telling people how Jesus has impacted our lives. As Jesus impacted your life, the shepherds went running. The shepherds went praising. The shepherds went glorifying. The Bible says when they returned, they glorified and praised God. Don't change the message, but change the method. Some of the methods we used to use are, are done away with now. But the message ought to still be the same. Yeah, we ought, to, we ought to make sure that people know that the reason for the season is because of Jesus. People need to know the reason why we act the way we act is because of Jesus. People need to know the reason why we wave our hand, the reason why we praise the Lord, the reason why we glorify him is because Jesus is the reason for the season. It's, it's, it's not about the gifts. The ultimate gift has already been given. If you don't get a gift this year, just remember that God has given the ultimate gift. Amen. And children, stop making your parents feel guilty. Stop making Back home, back home, back home, if we had an apple, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and some water, we were doing good. 
If we got, see, we got school clothes for Christmas. We, we got we got stuff that was necessary. That's why right now today, right right now today, right now today, Ashley, guess what, Ashley? I don't have to have anything from anybody for Christmas. I'm still breathing. I'm still moving. I'm still glorifying him because God has blessed me again to see you one more day. And I, I praise him this morning because, you know, I praise him this morning because on the way here, we almost got taken out. I mean, we almost got taken out at a high rate of speed. And, and we almost got taken out by a T-bone who ran the light. On our way here, if, if I had not just glanced to my left just a little bit, I had the light. The light was, the light was green. It was stale green. That means his light been stale red for a long time. And when I hit brakes, and because I saw him out the corner of my eye, I hit brakes. Then my life turned yellow. Let me tell you, it was a close call. And, and let me tell you how close of a call it was because I turned around and went back home. And then I got back in the car. And, and I, when I turned around and went back home, the Holy Spirit spoke clearly to me and said, Timing is everything. Because if I had not turned around, if I had not gone back home, I could have been at the intersection at the same time he got there and he wasn't slowing down. He wasn't breaking. So I came today to glorify. I came today to tell my story. I came today to tell my testimony. I came today to let God know that I praise him, I worship him, I glorify him, and I want to be just like the angels. I want to celebrate who God is because God that we serve is the awesome God. And he does it through this child. The Bible says the shepherds return. And in their returning, they, they glorify and praise God. For all the things they had heard and seen as it was told them. Are you going to use this season to glorify him? Yes, Lord, I have. Are you going to use this season to, to know that Jesus Christ is the remedy? Are you going to use this season to know that you ought to have some positive reactions and your reactions ought to be to praise and honor him? That's right. Let me tell you, we ought to be glad today there are some sick folk. That couldn't make it today. Right. But God allowed us to make it. Yes, there are some Thank folk God. today. Yeah. That could be watching us. Yeah. In very clean hospitals. Yeah. And the nurses are attending to them well. Yeah. But I'd much rather be in the yeah. building. Yeah. Than in the clean hospital. Yeah. God has blessed us today. And as we move toward. The year of 2022. We need to honor God. By praising him. We need to move it to the next level. We need to move it be beyond the next level. We need to praise him and worship him for who he is and what he's already done. I'm closing, Sister Davis. We need to honor him just like the shepherds did. We need to run and tell people about the Jesus that we serve, who is this child, Mary's oldest child. He's no longer a baby now. He's no longer a baby. He's still this child. He's still his mama's child. He's no longer a baby now. But thank God, he's, he is still her child. His name is Jesus. He is Jesus, the righteous son of God. He is Jesus, the, the horse born in the valley. He is Jesus, the light and bright and morning star. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus, I tell you. His name is Jesus, uh, the bright in the morning star. He, he's Jesus, the heart pouring in the valley. He is Jesus, the one who died on a stone hill called Calvary. Like home they would say it like this. It was on, on Friday. He took a tree, I tell you, and marched up Calvary's hill. He died on Calvary. They nailed him tight. They stretched him wide. They dropped him lower. And he died, I tell you. On a star hill called Calvary, they asked you in, refused to shine. Yes, it did. They asked you in, refused to shine. They asked you in, started shining. The earth kept an epileptic fit. Began to reel and rock like a drunken man. Hallelujah to the Lamb. The sun was shining. The asked you in, had gone out. 
the S-O-N one shot and centurion soldiers cried out, surely this must be the Son of God. Surely this must be this child. Surely this must be Jesus himself. He died on Calvary and became midnight. At midday, thank God for Jesus. He died for you. He died for me. Thank God for Jesus. They took him off the cross. Made him in a fiery tomb. It was a fiery tomb. Because of our name. Our name. Our name. All of that Sunday morning. He got him with all power. He got him with all power. He rose from the dead. He's the remedy for our sins. We ought to have crazy reaction because he is the reason that we celebrate. Are you going to glorify him? Are you going to praise him? Are you going to worship him? Thank God for Jesus. There's none like him. He's God's only big acting son. God's only unique son. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Will you call him? Because he will answer. His name is Jesus. Jesus the Christ. The anointed one. The son of God. The Bible says. When they saw him. When they heard from him. They ran and told other folk. They were amazed. They were astonished. They marveled. And other folk became amazed. Other folk became astonished. Other folk marveled. Will you marvel this year? Will you celebrate him? Will you glorify him? Will you praise him? That St. Jesus, that got up from the dead, caught a cloud, got out of here. He left here. He's sitting on the right hand of the Father. And when we confess our sin, make an intercession for you and me. One of these old days, the same Jesus that got here out of here on the cloud, the same Jesus is coming back on the cloud. Hallelujah! He's coming to get a church. We got a spot on the window. Hallelujah! Thank God for Jesus. He's coming to get those who's willing to praise Him. Hallelujah! He's coming to get those who are willing to glorify Him. Hallelujah! To the Lamb, the righteous Son of God. Jesus is His name. His name is Jesus. He's the remedy. His name is Jesus. He's our reason for celebrating today. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. You wouldn't be who you are if it had not been for Jesus. You wouldn't be where you are if it had not been for Jesus. He walks with me. He talks with me. And he tells me, I am his own. His name is Jesus. Jesus in the morning. Jesus in the noonday. Jesus late at night. We better teach our children how to call on Jesus. We better tell our children to call him because he is the remedy. He is the reason. He is the one that we rejoice to and we react to. His name is Jesus. The righteous son of God. There is none like him. Hallelujah. To the Lamb. There is none. There is none like him. He is the son of God. The Savior of the world. He's already born. He has died and he bled. He's already saved us. He watched us. And somebody today, he's giving you the invitation to get to know him just as you are. Get to know him today while you have chance. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt. This morning, before 8 o'clock, 
around about 745. My bride and I could have taken our last breath. Wouldn't have a chance to call you and say goodbye to you. But the righteous son of God saw fit that I would turn around. And when we're on our way here, we usually won't turn around. Whatever we've left, we'll get it next time. But for some reason or the other, I burst a U turn and turned around. God spared us. One more time. Let me tell you this. He allowed us to see Him sparing us. But I know, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt. There are times that he freed us from danger seen and there are times he freed us from dangers unseen. And so that today I glorify. I magnify. And I praise him. There may be somebody listening to me today who has never confessed Jesus as your personal Savior. This is your moment. This is your opportunity to get to know Jesus. The door is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to try him. It's very simple. All you have to do is invite him into your heart. Trust him as your Savior. He will bless you. I hear you. You say, well, preacher, let me wait till I get right. Well, you'll never get right. You got to trust him to get it right for you. Don't wait till you give up some stuff. Because the stuff you're trying to give up, Jesus can wash you away from it. The door is open. Will you trust him today? If you believe the story that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died for your sins, that he rose from the dead, Will you join me and bow, bow your head and invite him in today? Just repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. We praise God that you received him. We believe that you qualify for heaven when you die. We thank God for him for receiving him and we rejoice with you. Please inbox me and let me know that you received Jesus Christ during our broadcast or in this room. There may be others who struggle with sin just like I do, just like all the rest of us do. I want to pray with you and pray for you. Lord God, we thank you for who you are, for what you do. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you, Lord, for blessing. We ask you, Father God, to forgive us for sin. Forgive us for yielding to temptation. Forgive us for not doing the things that you ask us to do. Forgive us for being procrastinators. Forgive us, Father God, for not making the sacrifice. We ask you to bless us now. We recommit. We reconnect, we repent, we even reflect on your goodness. Thank you for, give, for forgiving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. There may be others of you who don't have a church home or without a place you worship or you're in between church homes, this is your moment. We recommend the New Beginning Church where Jesus is the captain of the ship, where Jesus is the main attraction. 
you want to join the New Beginning Church, you can walk down the aisle right now. We'll be glad to have you. If you're listening by way of internet, you want to join the New Beginning Church, inbox me and let me know that you want to be a part of this great church in Southeast Houston. We praise God for you. And we thank God for who he is and what he's already done. We serve the awesome. We serve the awesome and the amazing God. His name is, his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. He's a righteous son of God. He's the lily of the battle. He's the bride and morning star. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. He's my everything. And I'm just glad to know that I can say. Amen. Thank the Lord God. Amen. Praise God for another chance. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offerings, and sacrifices. Here. Time to give to the Lord. Hallelujah. It's time to give to the Lord. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand. Way up high, you will be served. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and you will be served. Bless your name. We thank you for income. We thank you for increase. We thank you for jobs. We thank you, Father God, for blessing us. Grace you to bless every giver. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. If you want to give to, to the New Beginning Church, you can do so. You can do so by going to Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Zelle, lifting. Dot Jesus and Yahoo.com. Or you can mail in your offerings to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Or as your side to stand, follow first impressions from the rear to the front. Bring forth the Lord's time offering and sacrifice. That's your side to stand. That's your side to stand. That's your side to stand. Come on, some pressure from the rear to the front.
Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And thank God. Amen. Uh, for, the, for the last month or so, three out of four weeks, I think, for the last month or so, uh, God has been tremendously blessing our church uh, by giving gifts to our church. And today, it is no different. Those of you who have come to church today, God has blessed you with another gift. Our friends have blessed us and have given gifts to us for the last month or so to those who have made their way to the house. And so today, our friends from Weedy Women Empowerment Institute is blessing us again. Right, Sister Davis, to come and take it further from here today. And as we begin to sign off from those who are watching our broadcast, just want to say to you, thank you for joining us. Thank you for being a part of our service. And uh, we really appreciate it. If you want to order a prayer journal book, please see Sister Whitlock and, and sign up to uh, get your prayer journal book. January 10th, we will begin our prayer time with a bunch of other churches throughout this nation. Our prayer time, and you need a journal in order to follow along. Amen. So we want to say to those who have joined us live, thank you so much. Uh, we're going to give gifts to those who are present. Thank you for being a part of our service. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. God has tremendously blessed us one more time. And we thank God for it.